to you and even understand by the mic that I'm holding in my hand that the only reason why I'm holding on to a mic is because I want to make sure that my voice is coming across as many people as possible. However, we're here to say that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, yes, my friends, if you believe upon the promises of God, if you believe with all your heart that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, and if you confess with your mouth, because when you confess, you confess, you confess with your mouth, and when you believe, you believe with the depths of your heart that he is Lord and Savior for the glory of Father, then you shall be saved. My friend, we want to see you saved. Why? Because even ourselves, there used to be a day in our lives where we were darkened from the inside, and we lived by off our sins, our inhibitions, our, and our iniquities, and we were completely lost. We were also, you know, blinded to the truth of God, the truth that sets people free, the truth that came into this world, the light that shone in darkness. Today, my friend, the only reason why we actually reject the truth is because of our hardened hearts. But the Bible says that if today you listen to my voice, if you listen to my voice, if you listen to my voice, hearken your hearts on to God. If you listen to my voice, turn away from your sins and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. The reason why I'm saying that is because there is such a thing as heaven and hell fire. One day God will be coming back in the clouds of heaven. It will be a day of judgment. There's a day that is appointed unto this world to be judged with righteousness for the living in the dead. The living in the dead will have to face their maker. And every person is going to have to come across the old skeleton in the closet. Everything's going to be on display on the movie screen. And that day is soon. That day is soon, my friend. Out of the heart speaks the mouth. Malice and resentment and burnless. We see it. We see people's heart completely, you know, completely broken. And you see, I bless you. I bless you because, in fact, I know that your heart is not in a good place. Your heart is not in line with the Lord. And your heart needs to be changed. That's exactly why we're out here. We're out here because we see people cursing us. We see people yep. swearing at us. We see people coming against us and hating us. Why? Are they Christ foes? Are they Bible foes? What are the haters? You see, Christians are hated among the nations. Why is so? Because the truth ruffles the feathers. Because of the truth that it's called Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody goes to the Father except to Him. You see people screaming and coming against us, and they hate us. They want to beat us up. We had a, you know, we had a sister, we had a person earlier, you know, spit on us. Only because we told her that Jesus loved her. Only because we told her that she can actually be set to free. Wrap it up to wrap it, wrap it. And, and we're here to say that we're not here to condemn because this is the good news that God commended his love. That while we were still sinners, Jesus died on the cross so we would be made the righteousness of God in him. Meaning that God has no exclusivity. God does not come to a certain group of people. He has come for the whole world. Hallelujah. Yes. Who live here? All right. So you came out of your house all the way down here just to this stream. I mean, so how about you actually just shut your ears for a few minutes and let me walk by. You can call the cops all you want. All right. We're going to bless you. We're going to love on you. So you see how much people are actually hating the Christians? You know, that is complete bigotry. People will come out of the comfort of their house and walk down and on the street and run after you. God, above the Lord Jesus Christ, as it is written, those are the good Christ from Genesis the the to Revelation. There's only one name of the heaven given unto I man, you know, to be saved by. The name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above all the names. And we're here because we're saying that this is a case of urgency, my friend. You know, the world is under a very bad condition. Everything is going down south. We're seeing the prophecies unfold in front of us, and there's no time to be wasted. All of you are actually falling down a cliff. And I'm telling you, we're here to say that out of love, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade you, each and every one of you guys, to repent, to turn away from your sins, and to come to the cross. You know, with brokenness and humility, because the only one that can actually wash you clean from your sins is not your own self, it's not your friends, it's not your pastor, it's not your priest. Your priest won't do anything under your admission if you go up to him and say, hey, you know what, forgive my sins. The priest could not do anything because he's just as flawed as you. However, there's one name, Christ the man, the mediator between man and people, right, whom you can actually rise to and call upon so you might be saved. The Bible says that Jesus came. You know, in days like these, in days that were gloomy for the marginalized, he came for the brokenhearted. He came for every single person that was broken from the inside. He came for people that were in need of a physician. He came for people that were in need of a doctor. Not for people that saw, but people that were blind, people that were lepers, people that were actually dead. And he said, come forth. 
come out of the grave. Today, if you are broken, today, if you're struggling, today, if there's something that's coming against you and you're shying away from telling people about how you feel, Jesus Christ hears your heart cry. He knows about every single inner desire of yours, but he also knows about your sins. Sin is actually corrupted unto God. Sin is distorting unto God. It is abhorring. And God has actually appointed a day where he will judge the sins of the world. And I'm saying, all I'm saying is that do not score up for yourself the condemnation and wrath of God. Because one day as you stand before God, you'll have to give an account of everything that you've done in the flesh. And if you have actually done things in corruption, then you will only reap, you will only reap in corruption. God is not a God to be mocked, my friend. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to go down the path of destruction and hellfire. You can accept Jesus Christ today from the comfort of your house or even the streets. You can cry out to God and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm broken. Lord, I'm turning away from my sins. When you acknowledge that you're a sinner in the face of God, when you acknowledge that God is holy and perfect, and that God has a standard to which you have to rise up, that's when you get on your knees. That, that's when the reality hits you like a brick wall. That's when you know you start crying and sobbing from the inside, and that's when God starts working in your heart. But unless you actually humble yourself and not exalt yourself, right? God won't humble you. God won't be able to come into your life. God will not raise a spirit in you, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Praise God. God for his goodness. The Bible says, let's keep moving. The Bible says that the goodness of God brings people to repentance. The Bible says that you know Jesus out of his own words said, Come to me, all of you who are laden heavy burden, meaning that it's a supernatural work of God. God is able to provide peace that surpasses all understanding today. Regardless of the storm that you're going through, regardless of the struggles that you're facing, the peace of God is real, my friend. The peace of God is real, and God has set a day such as this one for you to hear about the gospel. The Bible says, Redeem time, because we'll come a time to cry out to God and say, Lord, I am seeking for you and find him. But today, Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, closer than a brother. He is family. He could be your father. He could be your friend. You can have a relationship with him. You don't have to live a religion. This is by no means a religion. This is not a religious act. Religion will teach you that it's all about your practices, your sacrifices. It's all about your do's and your don't. There's 30,000 religions out there. That's a huge lie of men. It is all a lie of the pit of fire. Satan has deceived you, my friend. Unless you're born again of the Spirit of God, by no means shall you inherit the kingdom of God. So you're poor your addiction, your masturbation, your sins, whatever they might be, the fact that you hide behind your computer and think that you've got it all figured out, the fact that you're committing adultery with your heart, the fact that you cheat on your spouse, all of that will be seen by God himself. And God has his flameless eyes looking down on this world, and what God looks like the children of man, he sees no person that is good. He says, not one single person is good apart from God and God himself. Hallelujah. Would you please admonish your kids in the ways of the Lord, my friend, so whenever they grow older, they learn to obey God. Let them be men and women after God's own heart. We're not here to disturb the peace. We're here to say that regardless of your walk, regardless of your lifestyle, whoever you are, if you're still mingling with sin, if you're still mingling with chaos and evilness in your heart, today Jesus Christ can pave a way where there's no way. He can give you love where there's no love. The Lord can actually break every chain. He can change you. He can set you on a mountain like an eagle with open wings, and he can draw closer to God like never before. This is no religious speak. I used to be an expulsion. I know what I'm talking about. You see, we're not trying to indulge you in religion. We're trying to say that if you come to God with a whole heart, with a whole soul, mind and soul, then Jesus Christ will reveal himself to you. Jesus is enough! I pray that God will reveal himself to you. I pray that Jesus Christ himself will come down from heaven and touch your heart while you're sleeping. I pray for visions and dreams. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come and live inside of you and raise you up from your sins and from your darkness because we were there. I can testify that there was a year, you know, there was a year in my life where I got on my knees and I cried. I cried so hard to God and I sobbed from my inner, you know, soul because I knew that I was lost. You see, I thought that life was all about gambling. Life was all about, you know, uh, smoking my lungs out until I actually passed away. I thought that my Life was all about, you know, getting drunk and then inviting people over and say, hey, why aren't you coming over? And then I felt lonely and I felt depressed and I felt anxious, you know, which many people today, by the way, feel the same way. But then when people told me about Jesus and when Jesus revealed himself to me, that's when everything became, you know, clear like crystal clear water, man. And that's when, that's when the Lord came upon my heart. God bless you, my friend. Get right with the Lord if you haven't gotten right with the Lord. God bless you. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We can see that many people today have accepted Jesus. However, are they walking with the Lord? You see, to, to say that we have a relationship with Jesus is not enough. To say that we're celebrating Christmas is not enough because Christmas is a lie out of the pit of fire. Christmas is actually the invention of Santa. What do you think that there's a fat man that comes down a chimney that says that knows all things? He knows your works, right? And based on your works, he will give you accordingly. The Bible says that we are not saved by works. Have you noticed? There's 30,000 religions out there. Every single religion promotes the same thing. It's all about works. You know, you'll get by God, you'll get by God one day when you get in front of God, either to heaven or a hell fight because of your works. The Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith not our own actions, lest we boast, meaning that there's nothing that you can add on the finished work of the cross because the Bible says that Jesus said out of his own words, verbatim, it is finished, it is accomplished. God bless you, my friend. Talasta Tai. It is not your own strength. It is not your own power. It is not your own goodness because none of that avails. None of that equates to the blood of Christ, the blood of the covenant, the blood that was shed on the cross. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior for the glory of the Father. And guess what? Jesus is not a mere man for my Muslim friends and, and, uh, and who believe in Muhammad in a dead end. Jesus Christ is the Word of God that was with God. And the Bible says that the Word of God specifically came into being. The Word that was integrated onto God, that was in the bosom of the Father ever since the beginning of the world now, has walked this earth and we beheld it full of grace and truth for the glory of the Father. Meaning that the Word of God is what creates all things. Nothing was created outside of the decree of the Word of God. Heavens and earth, the meanings and principalities, everything will bow down before Jesus Christ. And what does it tell you? It tells you that Jesus is not just a mere prophet. That's a lie of the pit of fire. Jesus is not just, you know, a random man. He's not your new age your person, right? He's not someone that you can actually hold your hand up against, right? Jesus Christ is Lord, whether you want it or not, whether you reject it or not. I'm an ex-Muslim, ma'am, I'm talking to your heart tonight. I'm an ex-Muslim, and I'm telling you this, I used to be completely, completely lost, but today I am found. Today I am found, man. You'll have the shock of your life when you stand before God one day. He's not your mere prophet. He's not just a man like any other man. He's not like one of the 124,000 prophets. That's not what the Bible says. If the Bible is right, then guess what? All of you guys are completely lost and oblivious to the message of the cross. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of Father. And he said it out of his own words that I will go on the cross and I will die and I will raise out of death after three days. And he was ushered by John the Baptist that said, that you ought to believe in him. 340 prophecies in the Old Testament, my friend. Did you know that? Pointing at Jesus Christ for thousands of years through Isaiah, Samuel, you know, uh, the different prophets of old. And then Jesus comes on the scene and guess what he does? You know, he basically validates and clarifies that he is Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Are you good? So we're not speaking, you know, my, we're not speaking mythology here. We're not coming up, you know, with fictional stories. We're saying that the inspired word of God, God's breathed word, came into this world and inhabited this world, was flogged, was betrayed, discouraged, and led to slaughter like a sheep. The Bible says a child was given unto us, a son was born, and the government shall, shall, shall come upon his shoulders. The Bible also says, you know, out of the words of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. You know, from his eternal judgment there will be no end, meaning that Jesus Christ is eternal. He's everlasting. So if there's anything which you're worshiping today that is not everlasting, if there's anything that did not kick, you know, the door of the tomb open and then rose to sit on his throne and say, Behold, and said, Behold, I make all things new, then you better quit, you better quit that, my friend. You better leave it. Because many people seek for truth today, right? They say, hey, you know what? I, I'll spend my whole life seeking for truth. Jesus said, stop seeking for the truth. Because I've got the truth. I am the truth. I know Taoists out there that seek for the truth all their life. They read manuals. They read books. They read your seven, your seven steps, uh, uh, your, your best life in seven steps. Jesus said, listen, unless you deny yourself, Unless you die to your own flesh and pick up your cross every day, by no means are you worthy of me. So today the question, my friend, that I want to leave you with is, apart you know, from Christmas, which is a fake celebration, by the way, that is nowhere to be found in the Bible, because Jesus was not born on that day. This is a pagan celebration. My question to you is that what have you made Jesus to be Amen. in your life? Are you following his commandments? The Bible says, he who follows my commandments and continues in them is worthy of calling himself my disciple. Because many on that day will say, Lord, Lord, have we not laid hand? Have we not cast out demons? Have we not preached in your name? Have we not, you know, healed people? And the Lord will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. 
You know why? Because we have no relationship with God. We say that we have a relationship with God, but to say something is different from actually meaning it. Because to want to do something is not, you know, truly doing it. And the Bible says that he who says but does not do is like a man that looks at himself in the mirror. And as soon as he looks at himself in the mirror, guess what he does? He walks away from his image and then he forgets about it, right? The Bible calls us to be practical Christians. He calls us to be living sacrifices for the Most High. God calls us to be giving our lives out to Him. He wants the whole heart. He doesn't want half of the piece. He doesn't want you to, to take one part of that pie and leave it out. Because if you take that part of the pie and leave it out, then might as well just turn it around because the triangle for you to actually ring on it and let Satan come and feast on it. Right? God wants a whole psalm, mind, heart, and soul, which is why he said, what is the greatest commandment of all when he was asked by his apostles? He said, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your mind, your heart, and soul. And the second commandment that comes just afterwards is to love your neighbor and even your enemy just like you love yourself. How many people actually do that today? And the reason why they can't do it is because they don't have the Spirit of God in them. But to have the Spirit of God, to receive the baptism of the Father and the Holy Spirit, that will keep you to the end, running this race and laying hold of eternal life is only if you actually get God himself to come down in a very supernatural way. That's not religion, my friend. Religion is actually a lie. Religion tells you that, hey, it's all about your traditions, your sacrifices, your mantras, how many times you prostrate to Mary, how many times you worship statues that don't even have life in them. God is a jealous God. God is the creator of all things. We are the creation. We are the vases that God has actually molded out of his own hands. We are that, you know, vase that cannot turn to God and say, I'll do it my own way. We need to die to ourselves. And unless you die to yourself, pick up your cross daily, then by no means will you inherit the kingdom of God. Do not deceive yourself. You will not inherit the kingdom of God if you're still unrighteous. The Bible says that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Today we have gender dystrophia that is accepted. We have 58 gender types that are accepted. We have, a, you know, the abominable, you know, uh, abortion, you know, agenda that is, that is accepted. Nobody seems to stand against it. People want to live their own life the way they want to live it. It's not according to God. If it feels right, if it smells right, you know, if, if, it, if, if, it, if you sense that it's right, then, you know, go, go with it. Roll with it. Right? The Bible says that ethics come from the constitution that God has actually laid out already. He said, if you break the least of the laws of God, it's as if you have broken the whole law of God. Therefore, we are all condemned. Therefore, we needed someone to shed the blood. And Jesus shed that blood on the cross. He became the ultimate sacrificial lamb of God, acceptable unto God. When his blood, you know, fell on that cross on that day, what Jesus was saying is that the symbolism behind it is that if you believe upon the only Son of God, and if you believe with all your heart that Jesus was risen from the dead, then, you know, Jesus will transfer his righteousness onto you, and then your sins, my friend, will be transferred onto God himself. And Jesus took your iniqu iniquities and infirmities on the cross. That's what the Bible says. So I'll give you an example, for example. If today you're found, you know, murdering someone and you're caught right in the action and you stand before a judge, or let's say maybe a smaller case analogy here. You have a, you have a, you have a stack of fines that you have to pay and you don't have the means, you don't have the money to do it. You know, you won't be able to go free until you pay them. But then if there's someone that pays for your pay, if that person accepts to pay the full amount, that's when you go free. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. Put on Jesus today. Put on the parachute of God. Don't do it your own way because in your own way, you will be a miserable, a miserable failure. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Come to Jesus. Let us pray for you guys. Let us lay hands on you. Let us share with you the glorious gospel.